Good morning everyone and welcome to another video on Mr. Ong Med Lesson. Today, we are going to do calculus MCA level 2. I have a lot of requests, not only for my students, but a lot of my subscribers has asked me to do a video on the MCA 2020 calculus exam and here you go. Okay, before we start, a lot of people get confused between integration and differentiation. So if the question gives you an equation or a function, given the equation or a function, and if they ask you to find the gradient or the derivative, then you are going down to D and D, so you differentiate the, the equation and the function. On the other hand, if a gradient or the derivative is given, and they want you to find the equation or the function, you are going up, and in that case, you do the reverse, you integrate the the gradient and the derivative. So hopefully you understand when to differentiate and when to integrate. So be, be, without further ado, let's go ahead with the exam. Okay, the first question is quite simple. So the first two questions is an achieve. So if you understand how to integrate or differentiate, then you should be able to get the first two questions right. So the, the question is always the same in every year. So if you understand that concept, you should be able to be fine. So a function, is given by fx equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5. Find the gradient. So you are given the function. You want to find the gradient. So you have to differentiate. So the function is fx x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5. The first thing you do, you differentiate it. When you differentiate it, you get 3x squared. 3 will come down and the power left by 1. 2 comes down and the power left by 1. So the the derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 4x. It's also called the gradient. But this is not a gradient. So they say when the point is x equal to 4, what you're going to do, you substitute x equal to 4 into that equation. So f14 is going to be 3 instead of x replaced by 4 squared minus 4 times 4. And put in your calculator, this is going to be 48 minus 16, and that will give you 32, and that will give you a simple achieve in the first question. Not too bad, right? Okay, great. Now we are going to do the second question in the paper. Uh, that is also an achieved question. So B, let's tackle now, okay? Another function, so we are given the function. Uh, again, if you are given a H X, the most logical thing to do is to differentiate. So find the X coordinate. Remember, it's X coordinate of the point on the graph when the gradient is 5. So the first thing you do, you just differentiate this. So H1x is going to be 2 comes down to the x. Uh, so this will be 3, x plus 3. So what's the good? Okay, now the slightly different that the gradient is 5. So this is actually the gradient. So you're going to replace H1x as the 5. So you're going to solve x plus 3 to the 5, minus 3 on both sides, x to the 2, and that will give you the second achieve. So technically, it's not too difficult if you understand when to differentiate and when to integrate. Okay, great. Now we're going to do the third question, C, and this is a merit question. Okay, so the first thing you do, you need to draw the graph. Find the equation of the tangent of the curve. So they want to find the equation of this line or the, uh, the equation of the straight line of the curve. At x, x, y to x squared plus 5x at the point 2, 14. So you are going to find this equation y equal to mx plus c. So what you do, you first going to find the gradient of this graph at this point and x equal to 2. Then we do it, okay? So y equal to x squared plus 5x. You differentiate it because the gradient is also the differentiated. So you differentiate it, it's going to be 2x plus 5. 1, you know that you're going to substitute 2 into that gradient. So when x to the 2, the gradient at that point is going to be 2 times 2 plus 5 is going to be 9. The gradient of the red line is going to be 9. So we're going to use the gradient to get the equation of the line. So to find the equation of the line, you can substitute into this formula or the formula you learn in coordinate geometry. It's going to be y minus y1 equal to mx minus x1. So we know that m is 9, so we're going to replace m with 9. And we are know that x is going to be 2, y is 14, we put it there. So y minus 14 equals to 9, x minus the x is 2, so we're going to put it there. Use algebra, so y minus 14, expand it, 9x minus 18, minus 14 on both sides, y equal to 9x 
plus, plus 14, I mean plus 14, to minus 18 plus 14 is going to be minus 4, and that will give you a merit or M5 in the exam. Great, good, keep going. The next question is a bit harder, a harder merit question, but if you understand that, it should be fine. Okay, now, we are given the gradient function is given by f1x equal to px minus 4. Again, we are given the gradient function or the gradient function. So to find the equation, okay, what you need to find? Equation, you need to integrate. So we are now at the gradient. You need to find the equation. You go up, go up means you integrate. So the first thing you do, you're going to integrate that. So f1x is given that as px minus 4. You integrate. It's going to be px squared divided by 2 minus 4x plus c. Okay, so you are given two points, x at 4 and x is minus 6. We're going to substitute them, and the y value is 12 and 2. So when x is equal to 4, your y is 12, okay? So when we do, substitute 4 into the equation, okay? So put 4 into this equation, so you're going to be p4 squared over 2 minus 4 times 4 plus c, and they are equal to 12. Simplify them, so 12 equals to 16 Divide by 2 is 8p minus 16 plus c. Solve for c. c will give you 28 minus 8p. So far, so good. Great. Now we do the same thing for x equal to minus 6, y equal to 2. Okay? So when x equal to minus 6, y, y equal to 2, or fx equal to 2, substitute minus 6 into this equation again. Okay? So p minus 6 squared over 2 minus 4 times minus 6 plus c, and this time it's equal to 2. Simplify them. I'm not going to show you the way. And I simplify them using algebra. C equals to minus 22 minus 18p. That will be your equation 2. So if you know C equal to 28 minus 8p in equation 1, C equal to minus 22 minus 18p in equation 2, you can combine the two equations because both of them are C. So you can say that 28 minus p, 8p is equal to minus 22 minus 18p. Great. Then you solve algebraically, you found that P is minus 5. Got it? Great. Once you found your P is minus 5, you can substitute them into either equation 1 or equation 2. In my case, I substitute them into equation 1 because it's easier. So substitute P in minus 5 into equation 1. So 28 minus 8 times minus 5. And I found that C equal to 68. So finally, we need to find the equation of the graph. The equation of the graph is this graph. We found that P is minus 5, C is 68. Put in that equation, so the equation is going to be minus 5x squared over 2 minus 4x, and your C is 68, and that will give you a merit, which is a bit harder than the previous merit. Okay? Okay, last but not least, the hardest question of the Lord, we are going to find the excellence question on question 1. Okay, let's read the question. A fishing boat is 80 km from the port when it reaches its fishing ground. Having reached its fishing ground, the boat accelerates in a straight line directly away from the port as it catches fish. The acceleration is 80 is 0 0.5, where t is the number of hours since it started fishing. The speed of the boat is 3 km when it starts fishing. During which hour did the boat travel 11.75? You must use calculus to find the answer. So the first thing we know that the acceleration is 0 0.5t. So we're going to put there acceleration at the second derivative of distance. So acceleration is d squared s over dt squared is 0 0.5. To find the velocity or the speed, we need to integrate. So the first derivative of distance, so you integrate 0 0.5, you're going to get 0 0.5t plus c. So the first statement you know that the speed of the boat is 3 km when it started teaching us fishing. So at the time 0, when it starts fishing at time 0, the velocity is 3. So what you're going to do, you substitute velocity is 3 equal to 0 0.5 and t is 0 plus c and c equal to 3. So once you know you're fine, your c is 3, put it back into your velocity equation. So your velocity or uh, your velocity is going to be 0 0.5t plus 3 because 3 is what you found. Now you're going to find the distance. Okay, To find the distance, you need to integrate one more time. To find the distance, you integrate this number. So you're going to get 0 0.5t squared over 2 or 0 0.25t plus 3t plus c. Okay, So the first statement is that the boat is 80 km when distance when it reaches the fishing ground. So at time 0, your distance is going to be 80. 
Okay, so AT equals to 0, 0, and C, so equal to AT. So your equation of the distance formula is going to be distance equal to 0 0.25 T squared plus 3T plus AT. Okay, if you can get that, you'll get a merit so far. Okay, you integrate twice from the acceleration to get the velocity and integrate again to get the distance. So, so far, so good? Okay, so the last question, they ask you, during which hour did the boat travel? So to calculate which hour, you must calculate S T plus 1 minus S T. The T plus 1 hour minus the T hour will give you how far the boat has traveled in which hour. So we're going to do that. So what we do, using this formula again, okay? Instead of T, we're going to replace by T plus 1 squared. And the T plus 1 hour, so 3 T plus 1 plus 80 minus the t so minus this equation and that is equal to 0 0.75 so you do algebraically so you expand this so you're going to be 0 0.25 t squared plus 2t plus 3 and the rest remains the same okay now what we do is we're going to open up the bracket we expand it so 0 0.25 t squared 0 0.25 times 2t is going to be 0 0.5 t 0 0.25 times 0 0.1 0 0.25 and the rest remains the same okay so now we're going to simplify them. So we're going to take 0 0.25t minus 0 0.25t is 0. 0 0.5t plus 3t is going to be 3.5 minus 3t is going to be 0 0.5t. And then you have uh, 3 plus 80 plus 0 0.25, 83.5 minus 80 3.25 equals to 11.75. So you solve algebraically, your time is going to be 17. So the boat will travel 11.75 km in the 18th hour because we are looking for the T plus 1 hour. So 17 plus 1 is the 18 hour. Uh, a bit difficult, a bit of kinematics. So if you can go through this again, you should be able to get excellence. And hopefully you keep on practicing and see you soon. Again, if you have any question on uh, any math level 1, level 2, level 3, please ask me, okay, again, uh, in the comment below or message me in my uh, Instagram page, it's going to be Mr. Ong Math Lesson all in one word, okay, so follow me and hopefully you get it, okay, and watch uh, in the future for video number 2 and video number 3 for question 2 and 3 in the calculus exam. Have a good day everyone and see you soon.